RPG dice. Those shiny, colorful click clack rocks many gamers love to hoard. You need them to play. Many companies make them. Some people have their favorite dice based on style, feel, and color. Others have dice they reward for good behavior and punish them for bad behavior. And if you're one of those players, you're probably a cheater. You're probably upset with me right now for calling you a cheater. Settle down. You probably don't even know you're cheating. Blissfully ignorance of greater forces at work around you, shaping your behavior. So be warned. I'm about to shatter that ignorance. And at the end of this video, you will be faced with an ethical dilemma that, if you ignore, will result in you being an unethical person. If you can't face that possibility, if the mirror of life is too scary and any criticism is too much, here's your chance. Turn this video off. I won't judge you. This is your get out of jail free card. You still with me? <laughs> Good. I've always said self-awareness is hard, so you've taken your first step down a very difficult road. I applaud you for that, but it only gets tougher from here on out and I'm not pulling any punches, so here we go. With the epidemic in full swing, there has been a shutdown of businesses and people are being told not to gather. This has moved many people's favorite game day to online places like Fantasy Grounds, Astral, and Roll20, among others. I've been using these tools for a long time. When new players are getting used to the format, I notice one complaint comes up often. The die roller is bad. They accuse the die roller of not being random or skewing to bad results more often. There's no perfect random number generator, and yet games and software have been using systems that simulate randomness to such a degree that regular people like you and me, <laughs> well, they bear no difference to actual random systems. I put a link to a video about RNG, what it is, and how to take advantage of it in the description but for our purposes, just know that these systems can be hacked by a devoted person to give results that they want. But to anyone else, it's simply random. I mean, do you think the RNG of Fallout is fair, while the RNG of Roll20 is unfair? <laughs> now, if RNG of a virtual tabletop is indistinguishable from actual randomness by a slob like you and me, why do people complain? Why could you see a virtual dice roller as skewed? Well, it's because you've been cheating all this time at your own table too. So when something is actually fair and randomness, you're suddenly flustered and you don't know what to do. Now I saw your eyes roll right then. Settle down and allow me to explain. The dice you're using at your own table aren't random. Most dice manufacturers make dice that are warped in one way or another and the corners are rounded instead of crisp. These imperfections make dice favor certain sides over others. Just like an egg likes to lay on its flat side, warped dice will also want to do the same. There's a lot more that goes into this, and I've made a link in the description to a video by Game Science Dice explaining it in detail. I'm not sponsored by them. They do have a horse in this race, trying to sell you their dice that they claim are the most fair. But I have to admit, I love their philosophy, and I love their dice. We've all been using these warped dice. Hey, even me! And if we don't know how a die is warped when we roll it, well, who cares? Doesn't that also give an approximation of randomness we can't detect? Well, this is where our dice obsession comes into play. When a die constantly gives low results, do you put them in the punishment bag, where they are very rarely used? It's not your imagination these dice are rolling low. They are favoring certain sides. Do you have your favorite die that gives you favorable results? Well then congratulations. You have a way to die. You probably never even thought of it in those terms. You just thought some dice were good and others were bad. What you were in fact doing was selecting dice based on results. This is doubly insidious because while you keep favorable dice for yourself, if a new player comes along, you might loan him dice from your unfavorable bag, giving that player 
and an unintentional handicap. I've seen it before, a new player not having fun because of the dice they were given. One time, the dice loaner even said, oh, those were my bad dice, let me get you some better rolling ones. That was so nice of him. So be aware of dice that you're loaning to new players because, well, that can lead to some poor experiences. If you're a game master, you might be saying to yourself, hey, I don't like that my players are using skewed dice, intentional or not. You know, I had the same thought myself and decided to run my games allowing only game science dice. <laughs> Let me tell you how terrible these games were. People hated not being able to use their dice with their energies or whatever they came up to justify their unintentional cheating. They bemoaned how science dice rolled poorly. These games were so dreadful, they only lasted two sessions before I reversed course and let people use whatever dice they wanted. Mostly, you know, because no one was having fun. And really, my friendship with my players is more important than being fair to the game. Yes, it was terrible, and people had the same eerily similar complaints to virtual dice rollers today. These are complaints like, I like the feel of my own dice. My dice have my energies in them. These dice roll constantly low and aren't random at all. These complaints all come from the same place. That you have picked your dice over the course of your play carefully by seeing what rolls well and have gotten used to that kind of roll. So when you're forced to use something actually random, it seems or looks like this fairness is actually unfair. Your perception is skewed because you have dice privilege. Remember at the beginning of the video when I warned you all that you'd have to grapple with an ethical dilemma? Well, now is that time. Now you know the dice you're using and your fellow players are using might be letting you cheat. If you ignore this problem, you're saying cheating is fine. I don't care. This is a bit unethical, unless you can justify it. The answer I've come up with is to simply use the most fair dice I can for myself and let others in my group figure out what I've learned naturally. Maybe even through a shared video? But once you know, you are compelled to change. Even as a GM who likes to fudge dice rolls every once in a while to make the most compelling game possible, wouldn't you also like to know what the fairest result would be as well? Tell me your thoughts. Is selecting dice based on performance cheating? Are you going to change your own dice habits? And if you're not, how do you justify it to yourself? Do you use your own dice instead of a virtual dice roller even when gaming online? And uh, do you hate me for calling you out as the cheater you are? I'd love to know the answer to all of these questions. Gaming is a skill, and I truly believe getting better at this skill helps you make your games more fun. So. Keep questioning things and uh, never stop gaining experience.